Hello, welcome to Recapping with Delora and Ashley. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Recapping Podcast. Also, comment, rate, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. We're on all the things. We would love to hear your ratings of the movies and shows we review. Email us your audio file to recappingpodcast at gmail.com and we'll play it during the show. Or DM us on Instagram and we will post and read it on air. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. Hello, Delora. Hey, Ashley. How are you doing? Well, I'm good because we're continuing Halloween week. Officially, it is spooky season, as you call it. (laughs) We are so close to some events, some trick-or-treating. I'm sure some folks are already getting into some stuff. Like I said last episode, this week, I'm definitely planning on getting into some stuff. So excited. Very nice. Um, everyone has their costume and again I'm the one with the random wig and ears. <laughs> so yeah can't wait to un- unveil that I'm doing Janet Jackson velvet rope super fan hair just lends nice. itself to this so I got a t-shirt off of Etsy I'm doing the septum nose ring the oh. whole nine yards. The only thing I need is some shoes. Like I just can't decide on like shoes because there's it's not a a fit of Janet. It's just like as if I was going to her concert type of thing. But I'm a uh, you know mimicking her look of the era, I guess. So well, it's the '90s. So whatever so, was big then. But that's the thing. I feel like '90s style is back and has been a thing True. for a while. So I probably just try to get some booties or something like that and 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 keep it moving. But I love this time of year. So exciting things. Hope all you kids enjoy. But it is Thursday, which means it is time for our quick headlines and hot topics episode. And Delora, we do have some things to discuss. First one up, hurt my heart when this news came out early this week. Rest in peace to comedian and actor Leslie Jordan. Leslie died in a single car accident at the age of 67. Apparently, he suffered a medical emergency and drove his car into a wall in Los Angeles. I'm reading from Deadline.com and a statement on his Instagram page reads, the love and light that Leslie shared will never go out. Leslie Jordan became wildly popular in recent memory due to his Instagram posts I can Mm -hmm. think of some where he's like well shit what y'all doing pretty much (laughs) so delightful but he had appearances in Will and Grace which I think Will and Grace was probably his most popular appearance starring as Beverly Leslie which I loved him from especially but he was also in American Horror Story, Murphy Brown, Ugly Betty, Boston Public. Um, He was just delightful like I think that's the word that I would use for him. He was just delightful and we've seen outpouring from folks in Hollywood about this again so shocking. Delora what were your thoughts when this news broke? Man Ashley this one hurts real bad yeah I was stunned when I saw the news he was such a joy like obviously a lot of younger people got to know him courtesy of social media but he has always been a true scene stiller you know what I mean like whatever he was in he stole the show and so much so that I literally followed him in any and everything he was in um more recently he was in the show called the cool kids with david allen greer it was about the three of them being friends in an old folks home and it was short-lived but i watched the show because because of wesley you know i've even watched call me cat the show is not that great i watched it because of him and kyla pratt okay again followed him wherever he went because his Southern sensibilities, yes. his humor, his timing was just so priceless. And even in the 
reboot of Will and Grace, which is one of the funniest reboots, by the way. I didn't get a chance to watch the original. You still but, have to watch the original. But watching this reboot was amazing. And every time he showed up, he showed out. So he was hilarious. So and he, sad. He won a 2006 Emmy as outstanding guest actor in a comedy series for Will and Grace, which again is not surprising because Beverly well Leslie. Deserved. Oh, those scenes between Beverly and Karen, some Absolutely. of my favorite episodes. So, you know, I got this news coming out of Target and I like stopped in my tracks. And I know we've had a lot of, you know, folks who have passed away and it's been, you know, hard with so many yes. celebrity deaths recently, obviously in the orbit of all of that. But he seemed like such a lovely human being. So, you know, my thoughts and prayers are with him and his family for sure. Yes. All right, Jalora, let's get into our next quick headline, which is to discuss Will Smith's epic screening of Emancipation as reported by Deadline. You had some heavyweights come out for a private screening of the upcoming Apple original films drama. On Monday afternoon, Will Smith posted photos of the get together that featured Rihanna, ASAP Rocky, Tyler Perry, Dave Chappelle, Kenya Barris, and others. You know, the reason why I made this a quick headline was just because I was curious if you were surprised by any of the attendees that were at this emancipation screening. So when I saw this picture on social media, the first thing that came to mind was, where's Olivia Pope? Because it's screaming calculation. <laughs> it's screaming. <laughs> you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, this movie is coming out. This was a major investment for Apple. Will Smith is still heavy hitter. You know what I mean? But there's fear, right? On whether or not he's going to be able to garner the viewership needed for this year's success, right? So... Through my Olivia Pope lenses, this feels strategic. You have one, Dave Chappelle, who hopscotches out of cancel culture, you know. His day of self. <laughs> himself. However, he's a trump card in the comedy world. That's the surprising guest for me. Which gives me you know, the comedy industry or comedy arena support in some ways, loosely, right? And he's currently on tour, has been touring with Chris Rock. Then you have the billionaires in the room. You got, what's better than one? Two, right? <laughs> Riri, who is Hot Topic herself, in the room with her baby daddy, and the Tyler Perry. Mm -hmm. So... Very strategic. Or, or Mr. Chocolate for anybody who watches Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That episode was everything. Donald Glover it's is up a there trip. With, what is it? Teddy. Yes, uh, Teddy Perkins. <laughs> that creepy ass episode. <laughs> but this was just genius. I was like, yo, Tyler Perry is somewhere punching the air. <laughs> well, we'll be watching it. We'll probably recap it. <laughs> We've never wavered in our support on this podcast, to be honest. You know, we've, no. we've made our statements abundantly clear. We agree it was wrong, but we've made our statements abundantly clear on our support of him in his career. So when I saw this, it was definitely the, but it was the Dave Chappelle appearance that stopped me in my tracks because I know he just addressed it on stage. It's even in this Deadline article where he said that he felt like it was a very strange choice that Chris had always been himself, whereas Will Smith did an impression of a perfect man for 30 years, and he just hoped he didn't put the mask back on. So one could have Shady. taken that in a way where, nah, my guy, you're not getting this invite, or I don't want you around for a little minute. Maybe they passed it out, or maybe Will took it in a different way because they are friends, you know what I mean? So I get your point about this being a PR stunt. I know he also, I think, just did a screening for the Lakers that I saw a post on today. So he's making the rounds. But I will say this, Black Hollywood, in my opinion, Black Hollywood with this statement or with this screening is saying, we still got your back. We're still here for you. And it's we needed, showing up for you. Because this is what Black Hollywood and the Black community did for Janet Jackson, your 
you know, costume for this year. And it's needed. It's needed. Kenya Bear said, this night was magic and your movie is truly something that will last forever. And he called the film True Art. So, yeah, we got you back is the is the word. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our next quick headline, Delora. And that is Blue Ivy balling out at the Wearable Arts Gala. Blue Ivy, daughter of Beyonce and Jay-Z, for anyone who is unfamiliar, 10 years old, right? Bid over $80,000 on a pair of diamond earrings at the 2022 Wearable Arts Gala, organized by her grandmother, Mama Tina Knowles. It was a pair of Lorraine Schwartz diamond earrings, which previously belonged to her mother, Beyonce. She was eventually outbid, but just the idea of a 10-year-old having that paddle, waving it for 80 grand, just how much did you have to bid on something when you were 10, Delora? A cool 10 bucks? That's that's what I was thinking. I was like, at 10, I probably had $10, right? I <laughs> probably... Uh, maybe and who wants to, to part with it because if that's all the money I got I'm not trying to play these games in an article I'm reading for people though I must have missed back in 2018 when she was six and she bid on an acrylic painting of Sydney Portier and oh, yeah. had a bid of 17 grand so it seems like as she's getting older they're allowing her to bid more money so at 11 12 how much you think she's going to be bidding a million at the precious age of 10 years old, to have the ability to drop $80,000 of disposable income. Crazy. Not a year salary, but this is just disposable income for a charity event. Because let's be clear, $80,000 is not the median income in this country, even. <laughs> Listen. Ashley, what it does tell me is two things. She must like fashion and she loves her grandma, Miss Tina, because at the end of the day, it's for charity. And do you, do you think this is her money or her parents' money? You think this is Blue Ivy's why money? Why not? I'm just asking. She has a Grammy. She's she does. been, you know what I mean? She's been making music before she was m one month old. Okay. And put, giving little kudos to her other two siblings. This is for you, Rumi and Sir. Like Y'all not on these tracks yet, but listen, I got y'all. Yeah. Let me, let me ask Epic. you, let me ask you one more question. If Blue Ivy's at home doing chores, I doubt it. But if she was, how much you think she gets paid for doing chores in the house? Again, I don't even think there's money to that. I really don't. <laughs> If anything, her responsibilities are probably learn in foreign languages, learning how to play instruments and dancing because that's what she's good at. There you go. I don't know how these uber wealthy households are run either. Y'all already have all the services y'all need from the higher help that you Because at this rate, they're employ. probably talking about assets, stocks, bonds. Yeah. You understand what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah. what's cash? Cash is just another asset for her. She probably yeah. has a collection. The value system nice. is different. Yeah. So the assets are different because Absolutely. of the net worth that her parents are now at. So, yeah, I She's hear probably you. probably archiving her mom's outfits currently. Well, that's, yeah, There, there's definitely... Uh, She's the child of Beyonce and Jay Z. Like, I just. <laughs> <laughs> there are I no words. His Jordans. Like, I can't think of another super couple like that that I could, like, name in that regard in the music industry. I can't think of anybody else to me who's like that dynamic of a duo in terms of that. <laughs> I went very old school, Sonny and Cher back in the day. <laughs> That's true. One could have said that back in the day. That's true. But the only thing is like, I feel like with Jay-Z and Beyonce, they established themselves individually yes, so yes, much. Yes. So, so that's what, when they came together, made it such a power, power couple. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. 
All right, let's move on to our final quick headline. And I threw this in here for all of the superhero lovers like me and Delora, even though this is not my favorite. Who are these side men, of the Ashley? <laughs> This is the this you is the know, DC I know who they side, are, but still, I know, I like, but <laughs> it is major news given the shakeups we've seen with DC and how it seems like. So, guys, let me give you the info first, and then we can dive into the conversation. So, in this Hollywood Reporter article I'm reading, it says DC shocker: James Gunn, Peter Safran to lead film, TV, and animation division. So, essentially, they're going to assume the title of co-chairs and co-CEOs of DC Studios. It's an unprecedented move. James Gunn is a filmmaker and Peter Saffron is a producer. So you're letting people who are usually more on the creative side of things into the executive chairs and make decisions that are going to impact the creative future of DC. James Gunn is going to be more so over the creative space and Peter Saffron more so over the business aspects of things. But I guess as we're discussing, Delora, DC is not our fave, right? Because the thing that has separated DC and Marvel so much in these last few years is that solid creative direction that Marvel has had, even amongst all their projects and being able to tie everything together. And even in this article, they talk about how there's still multiple universes within DC, and some of that is going to be helmed under them, some of that is not. And so... As DC is not our fave, does this make you feel like, oh, maybe this is exciting? Maybe we're going to see some more exciting projects for them. I haven't seen Black Adam yet, but I planned to just because of The Rock. But is there anything you're like, yeah, this may make a difference by letting some of the creative folks kind of step into that executive role and take over? Yeah, (laughs) The, the quote that comes to mind is like, with the lack of vision, people you know, the people will perish, meaning like there is no vision for DC, especially after all their eggs were in the Batman basket for yeah. many, 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 many years. I mean, we have the great, you know, Christian Bell saga, right? Which won Academy Awards and had all types of box office success, but the one thing that DC has not been able to do that Marvel thrives on is being able to pull different characters from their vault and, you know, putting them front and center and having a successful show, having a successful TV uh, movie, what have you. So yes, I think this is a great idea. James alone has um, been behind projects that I genuinely enjoy guardians of the galaxy right suicide squad um so and peacemaker which has been um pretty successful i didn't watch it but i i haven't heard any bad things about it um as for peter again he's been behind suicide squad so they're not necessarily you know brand new to the dc uh world but the conjuring and aquaman and and things along those lines. So I think there's promise. I just hope that they're able to work together successfully to to get their vision together because it's not like DC is hurting when it comes to their characters. It's just bringing them to life. Bringing screen. them to life with a solid story. We recently watched uh, Morbius when it became available on Netflix. And, and I still have that. The idea of it is there, but the execution, not not great. Mm. The one thing Marvel slash Disney Studios have been able to do also is provide good stories because the, you know, Marvel is doing great because of their leadership because you have studios like Sony who owns Marvel properties and their movies aren't that great. I'm reminded of the latest Venom movie and they tried to incorporate <sighs> spider Bay tom in it that story was weak it was not great and i'm like how are sony is going to stand alone with tom holland's spider-man and not produce a good story and try to have this universe with venom and all that it's like it's not there it's not hitting the way it's supposed to be hitting (laughs) so i guess selfishly my thought when this news came out was 
so is James Gunn no longer going to be doing Guardians of the Galaxy because don't shit the bed with the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise because I don't know if he's going to be able to go over to Marvel now. This is a four year deal. Yeah, but I think I think it's done. I think whatever they're doing is done. It's it's, just... it's supposedly the conclusion of the trilogy, but you just yes. never know. So like my thought is just. Let's say something else pops up. Let's say we want to incorporate these characters in some other, you know, because there's such strong vision, I'm sure they'll handle it. But it's just like there's such a specific tone to Guardians of the Galaxy and to those characters that I do always worry when another creative steps in. Now, granted, he was fired and then reinstated. So there was that. But, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, I because just, of his behavior on set, right? There were some things that came out. Yes. But That was one of my first thoughts when I heard this. But secondarily, let me say this. I am not like, even though I say DC is the the, my less least favorite between the two, it's not because I don't think DC has great characters and possibilities. It's strictly on the things that have come out in the last couple of years. I'm still a huge Batman fan. I thought Wonder Woman, the first one was wonderful. I think I liked Aquaman. I'm pretty sure. So- I don't know. Jason Momoa makes things very confusing sometimes because because he's just so good looking. I don't know if I actually like gorgeous. the film or not. <laughs> but two I'm hours saying, of that face, that body. I say all that to say, like, <laughs> I'm excited that maybe any moves over at DC are going to be for the better because I do want to see these characters thrive the same way the Marvel characters get to thrive, and I do want to see these actors behind these projects get a chance to have the big blockbusters like the Marvel films do as well. Batgirl, they still need to get their PR together from that debacle. So let's hope that this is going to move them in a better direction. You know what it's like when new execs come into town. But that's the like thing. The show these are not. They can pick it up. Yeah. These are off. not. It, that's why I like this choice because these are not those longstanding executives who are being moved from one house to another studio to another. You know what I mean? Like maybe they'll bring in some fresh insights and some vision. One can only hope. So y'all let us. All y'all superhero lovers and fans, let us know your thoughts on that one. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Yes, yes. All right, Dolores, time to get into these hot fire topics. We have two today. The first one, can't help but talk about it, bro. I feel like it's all I've seen the shade room talking about. (laughs) So I'm really surprised you're agreed to do this. I just, you know, we got to talk about it. And I think the reason why I'm compelled to talk about it, too, is because Things have been like a domino. So Kanye West is who we're talking about, kids. My question that I put when I posted that this is going to be a hot topic for us is if Kanye finally canceled. Kanye has done so much shit. So much shit. But it seems these anti-Semitic remarks were the last straw for all the brands, all the organizations. We were just talking before we started recording that he even went over to Skechers. They moved him swiftly out even though it seemed weird because he came with a camera crew and stuff not sure if he is aware that they're a jewish owned company so i'm not not sure if that was a publicity stunt or what can't put anything past kanye but in this article i'm reading from the los angeles times let's discuss some of these companies that have cut ties with him we have gap instagram and twitter jp morgan chase def jam balenciaga caa MRC, Adidas, Foot Locker, Jalen Brown and Aaron Donald, who were repped by Donda Sports, mm-hmm. and even Vogue slash Anna Wintour has cut ties with him, which was not listed in this article, but I'm just throwing that in there because I know that that happened as well. Mm -hmm. Rolling Stone had a headline that says something along the lines of Kanye West will never recover from this. Delora, do you think this man is finally canceled? All I got to say is, it's about damn time in my Lizzo voice. Because (laughs) his anti-Black and anti-Jewish rhetoric is so ugly, so hateful, so... I don't have all the words right now because it's really pissing me the F off, right? Mm. People like him needs consequences to their actions please I feel like he has been able to maneuver his career in a way 
that I don't feel like he's ever truly experienced it in this in this way. So I think we won't hear from him for a while. I don't think he's gone forever, but. Well, depending on how quickly this deal closes with the social media platform parlor that he's apparently purchasing. You know who owns that? I don't, but I know it's right right wing. Yes. Candace Owens' husband is connected to that. K surprise, surprise. So I feel like. I'm also concerned because I feel like this is some manic behavior and it just is looking real ugly. That's all I I have to say. I don't, I'm not saying I feel sorry for him because I feel like that has allowed him to, you know, carry on this long. Yeah. Um, But it just seems kind of scary, like everything going down. And I'm just like, this is, this needs to happen. He needs to go sit somewhere in a corner because it's like that saying, if a narcissist sits in the middle of the woods screaming (laughs) by himself, does anyone hear him? You know what I mean? Like That's a saying? (laughs) (laughs) I'll say that's a new one for me. (laughs) It's like if a tree falls in the forest, it doesn't make a noise. Like if a narcissist (laughs) doesn't have a platform to say what they need to say, do they say it? Like what what what's you know what I mean? Like I totally get it. Hopefully this silences him <laughs> is your point. Stop platforming him and allowing him to spew whatever it is he needs to spew and there won't be an issue anymore. I feel like I'm Omarion and I got an ice box where my heart used to be because I don't even feel empathy <laughs> at this point. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. And I have been going down all the comments on the shade room post and all this. And y'all talking about, see, we, they got us turning against each other, all this shit. This man is not for you. I'm so tired of telling no. y'all this. This man is not for you. He could give two shits about you. I don't know why you're going 10 he toes down for, for this man. himself. For he himself for only. Himself. Tamika Murray did an interview recently, and I think she said it best. And of course, I'm paraphrasing, but whenever he's wrong he wants the community but what has he done for the community recently seriously not not a a damn thing and therefore you know it's very selfish it's selfish at the end of the day it's like you care about you being a billionaire you care about you being in these rooms exclusive you take pride in it when you are wronged you expect the community to support and help you, but it's like, what are you doing in the meantime? It's a reciprocal relationship. And I agree with Charlemagne, what Charlemagne said recently about him, called him a master manipulator. That's definitely what he is to me now. Yeah. He's he's this yeah, construing things however he wants it to seem, and y'all just eat it up. Y'all think what he has to say is is valid and correct, and oh, but wait, he has a mental illness and all this stuff. He himself said, I, I'm not, I, I was just exhausted. That's his current thoughts on having any mental illness. I was just exhausted. Oh, okay. Well, if that's the case, fuck you entirely, sir. (laughs) Like, I don't have anything else for you. Because to your point, when the shit hits the fan with Kim or with the Kardashians, oh, they trying to do something with my black children, this, this, and that. But all lives matter. Black lives matter was a scam. Slavery was a choice. He is the most anti-black black black celebrity currently. And that's saying a lot. Yes. Yes. He's worse than Clarence Thomas and Candace Owens now. What the fuck? I don't know about Clarence because he has a lot of power. But yes. Clarence (laughs) (laughs) Clarence has a lot of power. But publicly, Kanye West seems worse right now. Granted, we don't know what the Supreme Court is about to do. I just said right now. (laughs) we don't know what they about to do what they've already done is enough Ashley. <laughs> that's true no that's true i may be going too far guys but i will say that given this conversation given all these dominoes and these ships falling and everything that's happened i do hope that he's officially canceled i do hope that this is officially the end of this saga and this situation where we have to see headlines about him every day I'm really tired of it, guys. Please let this man go. Please. All right, Delora, our last hot topic of the day. We got to speak about our good sis Ashanti, who broke her silence 
about Irv Gotti in an interview with Angie Martinez. She basically said that it wasn't surprising to me. Irv flat out lied about a lot of things. She said that um, her ability to maintain her composure is a testament to her hustler mentality and professionalism. In an article I'm reading from Yahoo, she additionally mentioned uh, it's a little sad to see a grown man conduct himself in that manner. I feel like the Murder Reap legacy is so much bigger and we accomplished so much and made amazing history. And I feel like the way he handled it, tarnished and cheapened the brand. We all worked so hard and for you to be that selfish to throw mud on the name because you have a because you might have got a check that's so selfish and degrading. We accomplished so much. It doesn't make sense for you to have this hate for me. I genuinely believe in my heart that Irv wishes death on me. Wild. You know what I realized from some of the snippets I've seen from this interview? Irv Gotti is Sir Kristen you from House right of the Dragon. Out of my mouth. How dare you, Ashley? This I literally. You took the words right out of my mouth, Ashley. I don't appreciate this, okay? <laughs> you get the box one good time. Or the water, like you like to mention. Yeah. And you lose your freaking mind. I love her part where she was like, you know, sometimes one person will think it's something that it's not. And I'm like, yeah, that means that she was like, yo, listen, I've been I've been letting you touch me a couple times, but this is not love. This is what it is. And she also mentioned that, you know, for him, it's probably about his ego and about the fact that he can no longer control her in certain ways and that he's or narcissistic. Yeah, yeah. Having can't control access? things. Yeah. Yes. Saying he made her fuckable and all these different things. I mean, she she said quite a bit, but he's she definitely, a he's a bitter bitch. Absolutely. And you can tell he was definitely broing it up during his interview anyway, but I like how she mentioned that, and I agree, his behavior has cheapened the brand. Yeah. Uh, let's not forget the power dynamics of their relationship as well, not only in age, but him, you know, being the owner, the boss, and her working for him, essentially. Mm-hmm. And being a married man at that at the time. So, again, do not condone infidelity, but Ashanti was in a very interesting position, and who knows what actually happened in terms of the extent of their relationship outside of, you know, the business side, but him out here dragging her name in the streets, not okay. Not okay. And this narrative of her not being loyal when there's pictures of her going to court. Mm -hmm, Which she brought up. Mm -hmm. It's like, sir, who who are you? Where are you getting this narrative from? I don't know what was going through his mind. We did that interview. The liquor was flowing. So that's one thing that may have hurt him. But to even compare like his relationship, I was mentioning this earlier when I was talking to somebody about this, probably for her, like in her mind, like to compare it to Nelly, someone she dated for like 11 years and was in love with and all of that. This wasn't that earth. And if you don't understand that, I really, yep. obviously she doesn't know what to tell you, but it's, yep. it, it's the he probably wishes death on me that really made me think of Sir Kristen. I'm like, you got your feelings that hurt that she thinks that you would want her dead. Like, oh my gosh, you need, that's, that's strong. That's deep. I'm glad she got a chance to address this. I'm glad she got to speak her piece. I don't appreciate on the shade room posts. I've seen people talk about her wig. It's who cares? I her she, she looks great all the time to me. So let's not let's not do She's that. She's friend of the pod. Yeah, so. let's not do that. Don't be talking about yep. girl's hair. She looked great. And the point Why is are we so distracted. Like she is really giving her tooth. She's exactly. been silent exactly. up until this point. Because okay? you know, people just want to have some slick shit to say. That's why, because it's the internet. People just want to have some slick shit to say, Delora. A mess. But I'm glad that she is able to speak out on her terms in a safe space and hopefully she finds peace in this situation i have no desire on a response from irv and i know people are going to try to get it 
but he has said enough absolutely he was on that train for way too long absolutely and he definitely damaged any interest i had in watching that documentary which was the whole point of him doing interviews at that time exactly all right well shanti keep living your best life girl you look amazing Delora, that's it for us today for our quick headlines and hot topics. What are we recapping for the people next week? Ashley, I am so excited. Like, thrilled. We are recapping Netflix number one movie in the world. The School for Good and evil so good guys so good if you have not watched this movie i watched it the day it dropped baby i don't know what y'all are doing <laughs> charlie's theron kerry washington, washington so good sophia sophia right the fact that it's the two sophias i thought that was so cute when i saw yes. some of their interviews but yeah guys check it out we'll be back to talk shop then in the meantime Take care of yourselves. Be blessed. Bye.